The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Now, when Jesus had heard this, he withdrew from there, from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion from them and cured the sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. And Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. And they replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over the broken pieces, twelve baskets full, and those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. This is one of the most common told and heard miracle stories in the Bible. How five loaves of bread and two fish were brought out to feed. Well, the text says 5,000. But more specifically, though, the text says those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. So that's 5,000 men. And let's say every man had come with a, mo with a woman, a wife, a mother, a sister. And that every man or woman came with a child. We know that there are at least 5,000. And even if you figure conservatively with the women and children, there is very possibly 15,000 or more gathered there. And everyone is fed. In fact, all ate and were filled. And there were leftovers. And I've always wondered who got to take home the leftovers. Now I know that, that this is an incredible story of Jesus being present and a miracle happening. And not to take anything away from this miraculous feeding and at the risk of sounding somewhat blasphemous, I have to say I believe that the women gathered there that day definitely had something to do with making that fish and bread to feed all those people. See, it's only the women that I've known in my life, my grandmother, my mother, my wife, some other women, that I've seen with my own eyes an amazing miracle, and that's making a half pound of hamburger feed a whole horde of people for weeks. But coming back to our text today, today's story is typically only remembered for the miracle. Not to marginalize that miracle, but if we only focus on the miracle, we may miss other gifts that are there for us in this text today. And one of those gifts that I'd like to highlight is the gift of community. One of the reasons that I love this text so much is that this is a beautiful picture of God's people gathered together. Just like a directory would be a beautiful picture of this church gathered together. Ching plug? Okay. Directory plug, one more time. So it's this beautiful picture of people gathered together. There is no report of fighting. No one is challenging Jesus, which seems to be what happens all the time when a group of people get together in the Bible, and Jesus is there. We hear nothing in the text about people grumbling or complaining that they haven't received their food yet. And in sharp contrast, in the passages just before our text today in Matthew, there is the story of a different crowd. The ruler Herod has John the Baptist and wants to kill him. And it says, 
he fears the crowd. Of course, he eventually does kill John the Baptist, and news gets back to Jesus, and that is where we find ourselves at the beginning of this text today. Jesus is grieving over the loss of John. He begins to withdraw from the crowd when he hears about that news that John has been killed, murdered. But the crowd continues to stay with Jesus. They will not abandon him in this dark hour. We often hear that when Jesus is with a crowd, the crowd won't leave Jesus alone, that he gets tired and he wants to rest, and the crowd keeps pursuing him. But in our text today, Jesus sees the crowd following him as he tries to separate himself during this dark time. And then he has compassion. And in his compassion, he blesses food, and it supplies enough for all. And together, they enjoy God's blessings. They must have helped each other eat. How do you feed such a large group of people and not share the task of handing out the food? They had to have been in community together, helping each other. What about drink? Didn't they drink something? Wine, water, something during this time? And didn't they have to share that as well? So in this story today, we see a very large group of people taking care of each other as Jesus prays for God to help them be fed. It is a picture of community as God would have us be when we're gathered together. Now there is an ancient parable, not from the Bible, this is just an ancient story, and I'd like to share that with you, about a man who wanted to know what heaven and hell were like. He visited a wise man in his village and asked, can you tell me what heaven and hell are like? And the wise man led him down a, a path deep into the countryside. Finally, they came upon a large house with many rooms and went inside. Inside, they found many people and many, many enormous tables with an incredible array of food, everything you can imagine. Then the old man noticed a strange thing. The people there were all thin and hungry. They were starving. They were holding chopsticks that were 12 feet long, and it is all they had to eat with. They tried to feed themselves, but of course, they couldn't get the food in their mouths with such long chopsticks. They would continue to starve. The man then said to the wise man, Now I know what hell looks like. The wise man led him down another path until they came upon another house, similar to the first. They went inside and they saw many people and lots and lots of food again. But here, they were all well fed and happy. They too only had 12 foot long chopsticks to feed themselves with. And puzzled, the man said to the wise man, I see all of these people have 12 foot long chop chopsticks too, yet they are here well fed and happy. Please explain to me how this can be. And the wise man replied, In heaven, we feed each other. The text today po points us to and begs us to consider the idea of community. When we are community gathered in the name of Jesus Christ, how will we treat each other? How will we tend to each other's needs? How will we feed each other? As we struggle with how we will be a community, we might also consider then, who is my neighbor? Who is it that is part of my community? Is my neighbor the person standing next to me only? Is my neighbor those I can't see? Even those who I'm unaware of? Who is my neighbor? If we're really supposed to go and make disciples of all nations, 
That's a difficult question, right? To exclude anyone as neighbor. Is it possible that everyone in the world is my neighbor? Or is that just a ridiculous premise? There is an interesting way for us to think about who my neighbor is if everyone in the world indeed is my neighbor. And that is to think of everyone in the world as being represented by just 100 people. Now, I would imagine that's everybody in these two sets of pews here. Because we're a little over, well, we're a lot over 200 people, there are 100 people. But let's say that's everybody in these. I don't mean to exclude you all out there. But, well, kind of as a visual. So we got 100 people. And it represents everybody in the world. Here are the statistics. 50 would be female, and 50 would be male. 20 are under the age of 14. 66 are between the age of 15 and 64. 14 are 65 and older. Again, we're thinking about the world as only 100 people. 83 have access to safe drinking water. 50 would live in poverty. 76 have electricity, so of course 24 do not. 80 live in substandard housing. 67 are unable to read. 50 are malnourished. One is starving to death. Seven people have access to the internet. One would have a college education. In a group of 100 that represents the world, one would have a college education. One would own a computer. And five control one-third of the entire world's wealth. Only five people control one-third of the entire world's wealth. And all five are U.S. citizens. And so we pray. Good and gracious God, we are seeking the truth in Christ as we gather together to be your people. Yet we have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in our hearts because of our own selfishness. Lord, multiply what we have so that we might feed each other, both physically and spiritually. Help us to be the community that you would desire us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.